Hi folks, this time we're going to talk about bow waves. Now a bow wave occurs when the speed of a wave source is actually going faster than the speed of the wave it's producing through a medium. And when this occurs, kind of a V-shaped wave is produced within that medium. You've seen this if you have ever gone in a rowboat or a power boat, or uh, it's even produced by, by a little duck that's swimming through a pond. Um, and you get a V-shaped wave that is produced by this motion. So let's talk about how a bio, bow wave gets produced. So let's begin by saying I have a little bug, and my little bug is just hopping up and down inside of the water. And every time he hops, he produces a little ripple of waves that are going to go, go outward at the velocity of the wave in all directions around him. Now let's say that my little bug starts swimming in that direction. Now if he is hopping and swimming, it sounds like a very busy little bug, as he, if he is hopping up and down and swimming forward, what happens is between every hop, he is moving a little bit faster in the forward direction than the waves are moving behind him. And so the forward waves are going closer and closer and closer together. And because of his additional motion, the waves behind him are further and further and further apart. So the velocity of the source is a little bit lower, slower than the velocity of the wave. Now if my bug, as he's hopping up and down to make waves, and he starts just getting a little faster, if the velocity of the wave source, my little hopping bug, exactly equals the velocity of the wave and the material, then it's going to have ex this nice thick position right in the front of that bug. And that is going to produce a big compression wave right in front of him. If he goes faster, if his velocity keeps getting bigger so that the bug's velocity is actually larger than the velocity of the wave, he's going to hop, make a wave. Go fast, hop, make a wave. Go fast, hop, make a wave. And because his velocity is so much faster than the velocity of the wave and the material, what it produces behind him is a bow wave, and it is a large V-shaped wave that's going to go behind him. Now you might say to yourself, Mary, this is fabulous, but why do I care about bugs hopping in water? Well, this becomes a lot more interesting if you transform my bug into an airplane. And if you transform my bug into an airplane, you now have an airplane that is just sitting there rumbling on the tarmac to one that is moving through the air to one that is going exactly the speed of sound. And now you have an airplane that is going faster than the speed of sound. What it does is it produces this huge massive bow wave behind it that is a three-dimensional conic cone shaped wave that it is going to drag behind it through its entire flight. And that big massive conic wave that it's going to drag behind it through its entire flight, well ladies and gentlemen we have just created a sonic boom. And that occurs when the velocity of the source is faster than the velocity of the wave in its medium. So this sonic boom is a three-dimensional wave. It is conical. It is a big cone that this airplane is going to drag behind it. Uh, many of us have probably had the experience that we hear a sound wave um, from a jet and we look straight up because that's where we hear the sound coming from. But the jet, because it's traveling 500 miles an hour, has moved way over a long distance away by the time you, know, you and I get around to looking straight up because it's moving so fast. But if it's producing a sonic boom, this big conical compression wave is being drug behind it throughout its entire journey. A lot of people think that a, a sound wave, a con yeah, sonic boom is only produced when the plane goes sonic, supersonic. It's not true. The, the sonic boom is produced for the entire trip. So if an airplane is traveling across the whole in the United States, it, it's going to be dragging a sonic boom behind it across the entire United States. Um, and these 
compression waves can rattle windows on houses and annoy cows in fields and annoy people living in the quiet hills of Wisconsin. And uh, that's why sonic booms can be a challenge. Now, airplanes are not the only things that produce sonic booms. If you hear a pistol or a rifle crack when there is a gunshot, that is because it has produced a little sonic boom. It's creating a bow wave. Um, this is a pretty picture of all of the compression waves that you're getting in this firearm. A couple things that are really nifty is you can see this big compression wave out in front of the bullet. This is the bullet projectile going forward. Here is that really, really pretty uh, bow wave in front of it. This is the other thing that's really pretty from a physics standpoint. Um, the explosion was caused by the gases in the gun, and you see gases expelled forward and gases expelled backwards. That is a combination of Newton's third law and a combination of conservation of momentum, that you have things moving in two directions. Um, if you ever hear the crack of a whip, the tip of a whip is actually going faster than the speed of sound. And so that crack sound that you get at the end of a whip is actually going faster than the speed of a sound, speed of sound. Um, these are fabulous images of military aircraft breaking the sound barrier. And those huge compression waves right over the lifting surface of the jets is causing that conical. You can see that cone shape. Here's another picture from below that I think is so pretty, actually showing you that conical picture of it's actually pushing the air molecules together, compressing them so much that you're taking gaseous air, excuse me, gaseous water vapor, compressing it down into liquid water vapor, and you can see the liquid water vapor, and it's making a little cloud right on that lifting surface. Very, very pretty. Now, the speed of sound and this whole sonic boom situation, um, a lot of people don't realize how it impacts your normal day traveling. If you have ever taken a commercial airline flight, commercial airline flights across the continental United States travel from five to 600 miles per hour. It's pretty average. Um, there's some variety there. It's based on altitude, winds, uh, jet stream, and things like that. But if you're going to try and fly, let's say you're going to try and fly um, Los Angeles to New York, that is about 2,500 air miles between the two. Flying at an average speed of 500 miles an hour, that's a five-hour flight. In my lifetime, and I've been long, or alive a long time, that flight has never gotten faster. And technology and so many things have gotten better and better and better. Well, how come we can't fly faster from New York to L.A.? The limiting factor is the speed of sound. Because if we had aircraft that flew faster than the speed of sound, it would produce these big sonic booms that would then be trailed all the way across the United States and would cause massive amounts of noise pollution and it would be very distracting and disturbing to humanity. Now, there have been some attempts to improve the technology back in the 70s through the 2000s. Um, the British and the French created the Concorde aircraft. And the Concorde aircraft was a commercial airliner and it could only fly over oceans. What it would do, primary flights were between France and New York, and they had some other flights, but they were all over the water. Uh, they would take off, they would go supersonic over the ocean, they would go subsonic, and then land at New York or Washington, D.C., or places like that. When on a return trip, they would take off, go supersonic over the ocean, and then go subsonic before landing. They would go mock two on average. Now Mach means approximately the speed of sound when you're talking about traveling through air. So this is about twice as fast. Typical flight times LA to, excuse me, New York to London is about seven hours. If you were going to do that on the Concorde, it was about half the time. Um, tickets were about three to four times more expensive to get that incredibly fast speed. But people who were big executives were worth, excuse me, they 
found the time worth the price. So it worked. Uh, why don't we do that anymore? It was very expensive to operate these aircraft, and so they eventually got old. They were decommissioned, and uh, but that's not the end of the story. Right now, there are a variety of different companies. NASA itself is actually working on creating low boom technology. There's some private corporations doing this and instead of having all of the sound compression wave broken just on that leading lifting edge of that aircraft, they are trying to create either create these compression waves, have these compression waves spread out around the entire lifting body of the aircraft or produce quiet sonic booms. Uh, so who knows, in your lifetime, my lifetime, uh, maybe you're going to be able to fly from the Midwest to Disney World down in Florida in an hour, which would be kind of a hoot. You could go and come in a day and it wouldn't be a big deal. But uh, so the technology is being worked on. And right now, flights are limited by the speed of sound. All right, ladies and gents, that will do. We'll see you another time. Bye-bye.